have a quorum. Thank you. Helen, I understand that uh, you'd like to make an announcement. Yes. Uh, we would like to um, introduce you Henry Lucio. He's uh, our new planner. He's been working with us since August. Maybe you've seen him in the audience, but I want to officially introduce you to him. He's been uh, working with us, as I said, since August, and he will be presenting a few cases this evening. Okay. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. All right. Uh, other announcements, please silence all phones and electronic devices. Uh, if you disagree with the uh, decision this commission makes, you have the right to appeal it to the council. There are appeal cards over on the railing to my right. And if you wish to speak on an item, you need to complete a speaker card. And there's speaker cards over on the railing to my right. Public speaking, 10 minutes each side and five minutes for rebuttal after the, your case is heard. Uh, please exit the building so that if uh, other people are waiting to come in, they can come in. Please rise for the invocation by Commissioner uh, Randolph and the pledge by Commissioner Drum. Gracious Father, once again we come to you as humble as we know how, but with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts, Lord, as we recognize all the blessings you bestowed upon each and every one of our lives. Lord, we thank you for allowing us and blessing us to get through the, the four seasons that we experience. We ask that you continue to bless those that are still recovering from the cold weather, the Arctic freeze. And Lord, we thank you right now for our government, for our leaders, and we thank you for our employees, Lord, and we thank you more so for the citizens that we serve. And, Lord, we want to thank you and ask that you continue to guide this commission in a mighty way. It's in your holy name. Amen. Everything already? Okay. All right. In your packet, uh, there was a minutes from the February 2nd meeting. Hopefully, you've had an opportunity to review them. Um, and if there's no corrections, I'll accept the motion to approve. Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmaurice to approve. I need a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Postponing the cases. Helen, we have any? Yes, Mr. Chairman. On uh, page three, number seven, 2021-2218 ZC, and Mr. Jeff Shane is here to address the commission. That's the only case we have a request on. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Shane. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, my name, for the record, my name's Jeff Shane with the Junction Cell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, I represent Alamosa Park LLC, which is the prospective purchaser of property that is subject uh, of this particular case. I think it's the seventh item uh, on your agenda, wherein we seek I-2 zoning. Um, after filing the case, um, we learned that uh, there were residents, particularly in the Thelma Estates area, that had interest and concern uh, about the case, uh, its implications, consequences, etc. cetera. Uh, since that time, we have reached out to them and had a very brief but good initial discussion. Uh, also have been in conference with the councilman in the district. We would like to postpone this evening so that we can continue to have more extensive discussions with the residents to understand their concerns, see if we can address those, uh, and perhaps uh, maybe make this case a uh, little more orderly uh, to present at a later date. At this time, we would appreciate consideration of a postponement for one month, but certainly with an understanding that if the residents are not comfortable with where we are 
in one month does not seem to be sufficient. We will invite, report to you next month and see where we stand. So with that having been said, we would appreciate a postponement to your April meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Shane. Uh, anyone in the audience wish to speak for or against on the postponement of this item? I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Seeger. Move to postpone for one month. Motion by Commissioner Seeger to postpone for one month. Commissioner Randolph. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. The motion to postpone for one month carries. Okay. And that was the only one, right, Helen? Correct. Okay. All right. Next item uh, will be uh, case 2020-2142-ZC. It's item one on the agenda. Existing zoning is A1 Suburban District and A2 Suburban District. Proposed zoning, proposed zoning is A4 Single Family Residential District. Uh, location, parcels located on the north and south side of M MP Plush Road, west of Louisiana Highway 25, Covington, Ward 3, District 3. It's 134.73 acres. The petitioner is Corey uh, Herberger. The owner is Don Kane. This is Council District uh, number three. And this was postponed from the February 2nd meeting. Staff? The current request is to establish the allowable density for the proposed River Park Estates Phase 3 PUD, which is west of the existing River Park Estates Phase 1 and 2, both of which maintain the current underlying zoning classification of A2. The site is flanked on all sides by property that is zoned A1 and A2 Suburban Residential District and abuts property that was rezoned from A3 to A4A to accommodate the River Park Crossing subdivision. The requested A4 single-family residential designation will create a significant increase to the level density in the area. Are we hearing this case together with the PUD request? Yes, we'll uh, hear, them, hear them together and vote on them separately. And we're going to, uh, let me read the uh, second one into the... Uh, it's item 2, 2020-2143-ZC. Uh, existing zoning is A4, uh, single-family residential. Proposed zoning is A4, single-family residential. And PUD, planned unit development overlay. Location, parcel located on the north and south sides of MP Marsh Road, west of Louisiana Highway 25, Covington. Ward 3, District 3, it's 134.73 acres. Petitioners, Corey Herberger. Owner Don Kane, Council District 3, and this one was also postponed from the February 2nd meeting. Okay. You want to comment on it? You want to hear a staff comment? Yeah. Uh, we'd like to note that the applicant revised their PUD plan to show 384 lots, which is a reduction from the original 404 lots. The proposed PUD plan provides for lots of similar size to be developed with single family residential dwellings. The plan shows the majority of the 384 residential lots requiring a 25 foot servitude within the entire rear yard from the building setback to the property line, which would disallow structures in the backyard space. Um, while the PUD plan meets green space requirements, only 99% of the green space provided is passive in nature and is comprised of areas labeled wetlands. These wetlands are not programmed for any form of recreation and have little formal access for its residents. Staff recommends if the applicant isn't proposing to add more active recreational space that they place the green space areas and stormwater management ponds into a conservation easement which would permanently limit the use of the land and ensure public benefit of open space is maintained. Related to public services, a section of the existing MP Planche Road is approximately 12 feet wide where the proposed putt is shown. While widening the section of the roadway will be required to match the existing approximately 16 foot width of the eastern half of MP Planche Road, it's still substandard compared to the current parish requirements for new roadways of 20 feet. 
The proposed PUD plan shows 47 60 foot wide lots which front on MP Planch Road, which would require residents to back onto a substandard collector road that is proposed to carry an additional capacity of 384 home sites. If this rezoning is approved, it will allow it will create an allowable gross density of 404 home sites. Uh, the proposed density for this development is above the existing density in the majority of the surrounding area. Right. Thank you. Mr. Morone. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Paul Marone on behalf of Mr. Herberger, uh, the developer. Uh, of this particular project. Um, this property, uh, the 134.73 acres, as Mr. Darty read into the record, uh, is located on the west side of Highway 25 on the north and south side of MP Planche Road. Um, we are requesting, we have two requests for you this evening. One, to change the underlying zoning of the property from A1 and A2 to A4. Also, to establish a put overlay. With regards to the underlying zoning, um, at first impression, it may seem like a significant jump from the A1 and A2 to A4. And I would cede you that on paper that is the case, but I would urge you to look closely at what is along MP Planche Road. In particular, what is immediately adjacent to this property to the east, between this property and Highway 25. And if you look at that first, if you look at the zoning map, you will see on the south side of MP Planche Road that there is a parcel and swath of A4A, which is River Park Crossing. That is more dense than the A4 that we're proposing. On the north side of MP Planche Road, you see A2, but that's deceiving. The reason that's deceiving is all of that ground is River Park Estates. River Park Estates uh, has lots in it that were duly established at 60 by 120. So although it is zoned A2, that A2 designation was given to it um, in direct contravention of what the lots there on the ground, um, how they're situated, uh, their density, and their size. So if you look at both of the developments from our property line to the, to the east, back to Highway 25, all of that property is currently developed at a density that is greater than the A4 that we have uh, and that we're proposing this evening. So I would respectfully suge suggest to you that an A4 designation in this area with those other zones and those other uses in place would be consistent and would be even less dense than what is, uh, we see at our neighbors. With regards to the PUD overlay, uh, as Ms. Cook mentioned, we did revise the plan from the plan that was presented to you uh, two months ago and which has been postponed now. Um, first off, we reduced the density. We originally had 404 lots. The plan before you this evening is 384 lots. That's a 2.8 unit per acre density. So we're under three units an acre. We're significantly less dense than River Park Estates. We're significantly less dense than River Park crossing which are immediately adjacent to us. The lot sizes vary. You have in front of you a colored plan uh, that identifies some of those lot sizes. So when we amended the plan uh, prior to tonight's meeting, actually right after last month's meeting, uh, not only did we reduce the density but we also added some larger lots along the north end of the development um, near where we have the wetland areas preserved. So you'll see there is a mix of varying lot sizes that are there. There's some 50 foot, some 60 foot, 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on. So there is a variety of lot sizes in the area. It's important to note that 36.2 acres of this site is proposed to be preserved as green space. That's 26.7%. The staff has recommended that we consider placing a conservation easement over that green space to ensure that it is preserved in perpetuity and we're open and willing to do that. With regards to the wetlands on the site, there are approximately 38 acres of wetlands of which we are preserving and maintaining 30 acres. The vast majority of the wetlands on this site are being preserved by the plan that you have before you. Only seven acres are proposed to be mitigated and developed. The remainder will, uh, will stay in their current condition 
uh, and will be preserved in perpetuity. Ms. Cook also suggested that perhaps the project needed additional amenities. Right now on your plan, we have a basketball court, which is proposed for the northern area. We have a playground for the southern area. Um, and we are willing to add an additional active amenity of a walking trail, an aggregate walking trail, um, that will tie into that playground on the southeast corner and uh, will utilize the area around that retention pond so that um, they'll not only have the ability for the playground there but also the walking path to increase the amenities that we're providing. With regards to utilities, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we will be, uh, we'll be providing central utilities, both sewer and water, to the site. There are currently central utilities in the area. Uh, we recognize that those facilities will have to be upgraded to provide the capacity. We're in contact with the utility provider, and at the appropriate time, we're prepared to move forward to expand that facility to increase the capacity so that central utilities can be extended into this area. Traffic. We know <laughs> that traffic is a major concern in this area, and we know that it's a major concern with regards to this project. We have tried uh, to get in front of this issue. We've tried to be proactive, and we've tried to come to you not just with a plan, but with solutions. And here is what we would propose with regards to the traffic in the area. First, although it's not required at the zoning, as you know, we have submitted a traffic impact analysis to staff for their review and comment. We recognize that improvements have got to be made. We knew that before the traffic impact analysis was done. That was confirmed for us in that analysis. Let's talk about MP Planche Road. The staff comments mentioned that it is very narrow. We know that, and we are proposing and are prepared to widen it all the way from Highway 25 to our western boundary. We would propose to widen it to 24 feet wide from Highway 25 to the second entrance to River Park Crossing. From that point, moving to the west, we propose to widen it to 20 feet wide so that at the end of the day, the traffic along MP Planche Road will have the ability to have a much better, a much more efficient, and much safer roadway than there is there today. We propose to do that as part of our project, uh, and if we are fortunate enough to, to be able to move forward to the planning process, we will sequence that for you, and we will tell you when that will be done, at what stages, but most importantly, 24 feet wide from the second entrance to River Crossing Estates to Highway 25, and the remainder of the stretch going west to 20 feet, which is your standard roadway. In addition to that, with regards to the possibility of adding another uh, ingress and egress to the area, which we know has always been important. Those of you who were on the commission years ago, we had proposed with River Park Estates to have another ingress and egress to the north that brought traffic out on 25 so there was an alternative route. The DOTD did not allow that, even though it was constructed. We have met with DOTD. They are now in favor of opening that access and so we would propose to do so. In addition, our traffic study suggests that a right turn lane on Highway 25 coming to MP Planche Road may be needed. If that is determined to be a necessity by DOTD and the parish in our traffic study, we will construct that. In addition, there is a queuing issue uh, with traffic at MP Planche Road turning right onto Highway 25, particularly in the morning and at peak hours. If the uh, opening of that second ingress and egress to the north to Highway 25 does not cure that issue, and if it is determined to be necessary by DOTD and the parish, we are prepared to construct an acceleration lane leaving MP Planche Road to the south so that vehicles can make that turn and can efficiently and safely get to speed to be able to merge into Highway 25. All of these we are prepared to do. Uh, at our expense and as part of this project. So again, we come to you um, asking for your consideration this evening, but not just with a plan for what we intend to build as far as lots, but also with an infrastructure package for your consideration. 
With regards to density, uh, excuse me, uh, drainage, we know that there's a 25% reduction required on the 100-year storm event. We will meet that. Um, we know that there are existing issues at the corner of river crossing development. While we are not the developers of that project, we have heard that from the residents. We are open and have told them that we will look at that as part of our hydrological analysis, and if we can be of assistance, we will be. We may be able to assist uh, with diverting water. We may be able to assist with cleaning pipe. We may be able to assist with cleaning ditches. All of those things we're open to doing to try to make this a suitable and appropriate site. Finally, I would remind you uh, that as set forth on our plan, the entire project is within flood zone C. We have tried to be out front. We have tried to be forthright and come with solutions and answers to some of these problems that they have out there. We have tried to be proactive. Uh, we believe that this site, as proposed in our development, is consistent with and less dense than our neighbors, and we respectfully ask for your consideration this evening. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have uh, a couple of speaker cards. Charles Stone says he wished to speak on other. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? I'm um, a resident out in this area, and I've been in conversations with uh, Corey Herberger and Jeff uh, Valley, the developers. We were predominantly talking about the uh, issues with MP Plonch Road and the width and the traffic. And um, our concern as presented to them uh, is that the neighborhood streets in phase three are scheduled to be 20 foot wide. And we wanted to get uh, MP Plonch Road uh, wider than that. And they, as they mentioned to you tonight, have uh, proposing the 24 foot wide uh, section that would allow uh, the majority of the traffic to uh, reach out from uh, the park on the north side as well as the crossing on the south side. Uh, predominant uh, issue within the neighborhood is the intersection at Highway 25. We think that the acceleration lane southbound is a critical um, necessary thing to do. And they talked about um, having one in concert with the um, DOTD of about 90, 900 feet, which is almost to uh, Johnson Road. The other thing that was an issue for the neighborhood is the uh, drainage issues that currently exist in the Crestview Hills Loop um, area and the retention pond to the south. Um, there is um, a number of houses that have yards that flood, the drainage ditches overflow, the intersection over is covered with water. And that's without phase two in place and without phase three on top of that. So we know that those things need to be resolved and we think that that specifically need, they want to help resolve that and we realize that our crossing is not um, their development but it is something that we think the drainage needs to be resolved as part of uh, the approval for the um, phase three. I want to point out that it's been a pleasure working with them. They are certainly on uh, the side of let's find solutions. And I think that's um, something that we should applaud them for doing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rick Richardson, wish you to speak against. Can I take this off? Sorry. Rick Richardson, I'm here representing uh, Dave Aquistapace and uh, his partners, which own about 700 acres just south of the proposed subdivision. Uh, we have no problem with the resubdivision in itself. In fact, we would like to be an A4 at some point. The problem we do have is the drainage issue. Uh, I have, we have not heard any kind of plan of what the drainage issue will be. I agree with the last speaker. I think that issue should be resolved before they're given the new zoning, the rezoning uh, change. I've got some maps here which uh, clearly will show the, 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 all the water flows in 
our direction. It flows towards Covington High. Covington High almost acts like a dam. And it just, it's, the, the drainage situation there is really bad. And I think that uh, that needs to be dealt with before the rezoning occurs. If we can overcome that issue, we have no problem with the rezoning in and of itself. So because of that, I, I, I'm opposed to it. Mr. Quistapace is opposed until the draining issue is resolved. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, as far as the drainage, uh, that comes up in the planning phase. Uh, this is a zoning phase. Uh, so, you know, we will deal with the drainage and everything. They will have to have a 25% reduction from what it is today. Okay? Now, uh, in our packet, there was a, uh, a drainage map that showed that the uh, outfall, and Paul, you correct me if I'm wrong here, that the outfall will eventually end up in, in the uh, Chifuncta River uh, horse, horse branch. <laughs> okay, okay. that's about to be interesting to see. All right, so but, but let me ask you this question because I'm, I'm a novice at this. Um, so if the rezoning is done and subsequently is, what, what, what's to make them do the drainage like it's supposed to be done? Uh, well, our staff, okay? Okay. And, and it has to, to meet all of the ordinances that we have in place today or they don't get approved. I have to sign off on the plats uh, once it's all uh, done, and I know that it's it's done and done properly. Then I sign off on them, and they're recorded. Are there any more public hearings concerning the drainage? Yes. Yes. Okay. There'll be another hearing, uh, probably 60 days down the road, 90 days. Paul, any idea? <laughs> yeah, if it's approved. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if it's approved, then obviously there would be another public hearing as we enter the planning process. Uh, that's probably 120 days because there's okay. a great deal of uh, work that goes into the, the drainage study, uh, the topographical surveys, and so forth. But it's 90 best case scenario, but normally it's a little closer to 120 before we get to that point. Okay. Yeah, you, you knew better than I would because... I don't keep track of that part of it. All right, we're going to go into the rebuttal phase of it. Uh, is there anyone else that wishes to speak either for or against? All right, we're going to go into the rebuttal phase. Mr. Perone, you, you're first up. So, Just a, uh, just a few comments uh, with regards to, to Mr. Stone. Uh, there's been great dialogue between Mr. Valley, Mr. Herberger, uh, and Mr. Stone about, uh, about the issues. Uh, I tried my best to touch on those issues um, when I made my presentation to you, but just to reiterate, um, we are aware of his concern and the residents' concern about the width of MP Planche Road. We are committed to the widening that I explained before uh, so that uh, it will uh, accommodate not only our development, but it'll make it better for the people that are already residing in that area. Likewise, with regards to the drainage problem that they have at River Park Crossing now, um, that is on our radar screen. We're aware of that. Uh, we've already started looking at that and looking at some of the infrastructure in that area, and um, we are committed to trying to be uh, a force to resolve that. Again, until we know exactly what it is, I can't st stand here and uh, tell Mr. Stone or tell you that don't worry, we're going to fix it. But while we are mobilized, while we are doing our work out there and, and working on our drainage, um, we are committed to trying to help that resolve that issue. And that's something that if we get to the preliminary stage, uh, I would fully expect to have more detail even though that's outside of the scope of what we would be doing for you, but to be able to report back to you as to what we've found uh, and what we think we can do to help be a force for, uh, for rectifying that issue. Generally speaking, just for uh, edification of everybody, because sometimes um, we take for granted that uh, people know these processes at the parish, uh, and that's not always the case. But... And I, and I may say things that obviously you know, but I think it's important for the residents to know. 
uh, and others in the audience this evening. But zoning doesn't allow any work to commence on this site, right? If, if the zoning is approved tonight and it ultimately goes to the council and it is approved by the council, we're not able to begin work. There is, a, there is much, much more that must be done, much more detail that must be done, plans that must be submitted regarding drainage that, that have to be approved by your staff, by this council, this commission. Then the infrastructure has to be put in place that is then inspected, that then comes back before you to make sure that it was built according to how it was planned. Then there is a either two or five year warranty period. I've lost track of which one it is, but there's a significant warranty period at which time that infrastructure has to perform as approved and as constructed. And if it doesn't, then it has to be fixed. So there is, there is a long line of approvals that have to be put in place and, uh, and inspections that have to be made and public hearings along the way so that all of this is done so that everybody in the public has the ability to know what's going on and comment on it. So tonight is the first step uh, of what is a multi-step process. Uh, we ask for your consideration to take that step. We would, uh, we would ask that you not only look at what our, our plan is with regards to the lots and the layout, although we believe the density is appropriate and consistent with what's next door, uh, we know there are issues, we know there are concerns out there. Those concerns exist today, and we, we are trying to be a force for rectifying some of those and addressing some of those concerns as part of this project. So the widening of MP Planche Road uh, is a benefit for the entire area. Um, we'd like to be a part of that. Opening that second entrance onto Highway 25, we'd like to be a part of that. We'd like to facilitate that. Uh, the turning lanes and the acceleration lane, if that's what's needed, if that's what's determined by DOTD, and the engineers on this staff, we want to facilitate that. We want to be a part of that. At the end of the day, this is a unique area for north of Covington in that you have River Park Crossing, you have River Park Estates. Those are there, those have been there. This is adjacent to it. This is compatible with that, I would respectfully suggest to you. So uh, with that being said, again, we thank you for your consideration. Uh, we ask that you strongly consider what we put for before you this evening, and we ask for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Stone or Mr. Richardson, either one of you gentlemen, uh, have any rebuttal? Just trying to, I just would not, I mean, as long as we can be a part of the process. Back to the microphone. We would just like to be part of the process concerning the drainage, because as you know, wetlands, problems, et cetera, can make your property very less valuable. Okay. Uh, all I can suggest is that you uh, watch the, the notices. Uh, and uh, I just hope my friend Mr. Marone will courtesy me. Courtesy. Yes, okay. That would probably be the best. Sometimes public notices on the website get missed, but uh, that's about as close as we can do as a public body to get it out to the public. And... Uh, Mr. Sean, you have no other comment? I want to, thank, I want to again thank you, thank the commission and the, and the developers. Uh, one thing that was just mentioned was the second entrance, which actually would be on River Park Drive, um, extending on into Highway 25. I know that the residents on that drive would be um, concerned about additional traffic on their street, which is you know, just a regular neighborhood street put down with a uh, phase three attached to the west side uh, and phase two on the west side, then that would be the potential for more traffic and they would be concerned about that. Uh, with traffic studies, of course, that dictate the numbers on that. Okay. For the one to make that aware. Otherwise, um, I think we're ready to get the program working and uh, get it through the systems. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else wish to speak for or against? We're in a rebuttal right now. I see no one. I'm going to close it uh, to the public and bring it back to the commission. Mr. Randolph. Mr. Marone. 
<clears throat> yes, sir. Appreciate all of the um, additional <clears throat> amenities you guys have, have really decided to enhance and improve uh, this project. I do have a concern, however, as it relates to uh, some of the items that staff did uh, mention, and I'd just like for you to address those if possible, and that would be uh, with the issues we've experienced as a result of this Arctic blast and with um, electricity going out and all, I'm noticing um, that you guys are communicating or have communicated with one utility and you're communicating with another one to handle the density or the capacity of the area? So, so uh, there is, uh, there's one utility provider for sewer and water in, uh, in this area. It mm -hmm. was H2O, I think it's now Magnolia. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, we are in contact with them um, about uh, their facilities in the area. Uh, and what upgrades will need to be made to those to add the additional capacity to serve this area. Um, and we are confident that, uh, that there, is, there is room and that their systems are capable of up, up, upgrading. Uh, it's a matter of uh, our expense to bring those facilities up so that they can, uh, they can provide that capacity, but we're very comfortable that that, that can happen. Um, and I know a lot of things the uh, commissioner had already, our uh, chairperson has already made known that drainage is part of planning, but it is an, an item that's identified here as it relates to the pond. Um, that's the, uh, the retention pond that's on the back end, and it seems as if it's overflowing or causing some, some water to drain other, other areas. Um, how do you guys seem, uh, tend to uh, accommodate or to fix that if that is a problem? Well, from my understanding, the existing, I'm not sure that the existing problem is a, is a detention pond, uh, but some of the, the laterals and ditches that go to it, um, again, that's, that's off our site, but it is adjacent to us. Um, so at this point, what I can tell you is that Mr. Stone has made us aware of that. Uh, we've been in the field, uh, Mr. Valley uh, and Mr. Herberker, uh, looking at, at what is causing that and what may be done to address that. Um, if and when we get to preliminary, uh, I'll have the ability to have Mr. Williams, our engineer, look at that more closely, be able to give you a more definitive answer as to what we see and what we think we may be able to do with that. But a few of the things that, that we believe likely would be helpful um, would be cleaning culverts, which may be silted in, as well as cleaning some of the overgrown ditches that are, that are in that area. All of those we think would help that flow uh, to get where it's going. I would also point out that with regards to the detention pond, the staff did point out in their comments that if you look at our southeast corner, mm -hmm. uh, you see we have a, a rather large detention pond identified in that mm -hmm. area. That is adjacent to an existing retention pond in River Park Crossing. It was suggested that perhaps we would combine those two, and we're certainly open to doing that. Okay. <clears throat> and last but not least, Mr. Chair, um, the road, um, you're, you're suggesting to expand them 24 up to a certain point. I think you said the second stop or something like that. That's correct. And then uh, 20. Uh, how wide are the roads now? Um, it varies, okay. but, but, but I, will, I will tell you that the, uh, well, the intersection of Highway 25 and MP Planche was already uh, improved as part of River Park Crossings and River Park Estates. So that's a, that's a three lane, you have a, a right turning lane, uh, a straight lane, and then an inbound lane. So for a short distance there, um, it's, it's, it's wide and very nice. As you move to the west, um, it gets very narrow. I, would, I will tell you that it probably drops to 16 feet and then probably drops to, I'm going to say 13 feet, give or take, as you move. For, so it is, it is, it is substandard uh, in the true sense of the word. So there, um, 
while the front of the road is fine because it's improved, as you move to the, to the west, it is in need of improvement. And uh, we recognize that. We don't shy away from that. We, we propose to make those improvements, as I've said. Okay. Okay, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Drum. Thank you. Yes. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir, Mr. Drum. Um, I'm looking at this is the most current one, right? Yes. Okay. And you're showing green space. Is it just around the retention ponds? Um, and then you got that one little spot down there on the south side? So um, the largest um, area is, is the 27.87 acres at the north end. Right up here? Yes. All of that green that you see up there, all of that is green space. You then have, you then have the, the green space uh, here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, you also have the green space that exists around all of the ponds and additional park area here. So you've got largest area and then pockets throughout. Well, how wet is that larger spot on the top? Because a photograph I saw was a little, beside being wet lands, it was wet land. It's, so it's wetlands. It is, it is jurisdictional wetlands. so, I mean, wetlands. people can't really use that then if it's wetlands, um, wetlands. Well, it's, so it, I would tell you that it is classified as wetlands, um, but you shouldn't confuse wetlands with swamp. Um, and Ms. McGinnis would know, or could answer the question better than I, but, but wetlands can be utilized. Uh, but the... The, uh, the purpose is to preserve them so that they're not filled and developed, but it doesn't mean that people can't get out in them uh, and can't enjoy them um, for walking, sightseeing, and things of, of, those nature, of that nature. And th this land is, is suited for that. In other words, it, would not, uh, it, it is not wet in the sense that uh, you could not uh, walk out there and, in, and enjoy that area. Okay. Uh Phase two is north of this? I cannot remember. Uh, phase two would be east of this. East? Okay. Yes. How much of phase two is completed? Mm, it is under construction. Dirt work. Uh, uh, so it is under construction. The dirt work is in process. It'll be completed later this year. The, the dirt work, but that's not the, the whole subdivision. Uh, the, in, the, in, the entire development. Need to. Uh, so phase two is 79 lots, uh, and that will be complete. That will complete phase two, and that should be completed later this year. Okay. Well, when I was looking at the, we got this letter sent by your gentleman. There it was uh, proposed River Park Estates Phase Three Traffic Impact Study. Yes. Yes. And I read this, and there were all kind of diagrams and stuff. I didn't have enough paper to print everything. Right. Um, you were using the 2019 traffic study. Correct. Which included uh, phase two. But now you want us to also include phase three in the 2019 where it was used for phase two. So how much, and I looked at the numbers, I sat there and looked at it, and um, I think there's gonna be more traffic than what the estimate was mm -hmm. after you put these, what, 300 and something homes in here? Or, mm -hmm. And so, uh, when do you expect that you'll be able to, if this goes through, apply for this newer phase uh, traffic study? Good question. So you're right. We, we had to, because of uh, DOTD is not accepting any counts right now, um, we, although not required, we wanted to get the best data that we could at this early stage. So we had the counts from 2019. So we used those counts. We added to them. Um, what we have here, which we think gives us a good baseline, is exactly accurate. No. Would we have to have counts if and when we get to preliminary or tentative? Yes. We, we know we will. The, the purpose of that was to be able to give us the best data that we could get our hands on at this stage. And we think it's helpful. Uh, is it, uh, would it, will it have to be readdressed with the new numbers if and when we get to the, uh, the planning stage? Absolutely. We know that. But we have a baseline, and, uh, and it tells us that we know we're going to need some improvements in that area. 
That's what we wanted to know at this point. What are those? And there may be more once the traffic study is ultimately done, but at least those we know about today. Okay. And when I, I looked at this, who owns this piece of property here? Um, there is, the gentleman, I don't know the gentleman's name, but we are, I know that my clients are in contact with and have met with him uh, and talked with him personally. I forget the gentleman's name now. Okay, because I see where it says other waters that comes out of the wetlands, the wet wetlands. Yeah. And it's uh, like a drainage canal or ditch or whatever the term is, and it runs down into this other piece of property. Mm -hmm. But it would run under your subdivision. Would you put like a large uh, concrete culvert under there to handle that, or, or how would you do that? So that's a good question. So what that is, I asked that very question myself. What, what is that? <laughs> and um, that is not a natural stream. That is a ditch. Uh, that is a ditch that, from what we have been able to learn, is in fact a lateral that the parish maintains. So um, our plan would be, as part of preliminary, we would have to determine how best to deal with that. Most likely, we will propose to take that and relocate it along our property line. Uh, but that's something that we wouldn't know for sure until we had all of the topo work done, had the opportunity to do all the engineering, and then, of course, to talk to the engineering, engineers in the parish about that. But the, the concept right now is that we would take it and we would simply relocate it, maintaining its capacity, uh, and redig it along our property line. On the, on the east side? Probably on the west side. West side. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about that shooting range, which is right up, goes right up against the back of your property? Um, what kind of liability do you think your folks might have? Rifle Range with? Road. Yeah. Um, that is not a shooting range, okay. though it is named Rifle Range Road. Um, it just says property, Rifle Range. That's all it says. Um, the, the little gravel road is known as Rifle Range Road. And I'm looking to my clients to make sure that I'm not misspeaking on that. Um, that property is all owned by the city of Covington. Okay. And they have um, various public works, utilities, and things of that nature back in that area. Yeah, well, about the, I'm sorry about that mistake. I, when no, I was good, looking at it, it just said rifle range. Good question. Good question. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yes, I'm, I'm done with you in the next one. Can you? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Crawford. Okay. Um, Paul, let me ask you your questions first. Um, so there are no houses out there now at all in any phase? Uh, um, n not on any of this property, <clears throat> no. But on phase one or phase two, no houses? Uh, yes, yes. There, um, so River Park Crossing is, in, I believe it's entirely built out. Okay. And then River Park Estates, phase one, um, there, are, there are many houses built. Okay. It's, it's built out. Okay, okay. Yes. And phase two is? Uh, is under construction. Earth, earthwork only. Correct. Okay. That's correct, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you answered my question that I had about the other waters, because I saw that cutting through the lots and didn't know how that was going to work out right. too good. Um, we saw some pictures that Ms. McGinnis furnished to us that it was a, clearly a, a drainage ditch that, yeah. that seems to be well-maintained, but mm -hmm. can't see that going through the middle no. of lots. Correct, correct. So I have one more question for um, staff, which is um, Paul and his client have made some pledges for road work and so on. Is there any way to tie that to this zoning? Is there a guarantee or any anything in place that guarantees that would be done if this is approved? I mean, it's normally would you would not put a condition on a PUD, search a condition on a PUD. Um, if legal wants to add to this comment. But it, this is something that is definitely addressed at the planning commission level where you vote on that particular requirement. Mm -hmm. So at this time, um, you know, of course, you know, Mr. Moron is representing his client, and I think he made it clear that, you know, he was, you know, confirming that it was subject to it. And, and that's basically what I'm looking at. You're saying subject to but we don't have any subject to exactly, so. If I may, Mr. Crawford, sure. may I make a suggestion for sure. uh, staff and the commission to consider? Um, we, would, we would propose to put all of these items that I have committed to on the, place, on the face of this PUD plat okay. to make it part of this PUD plat. 
Um, and that way it is, it is more than just me telling you that we'll do it. You know, I intend okay. to do what we say we're going to do, but I understand okay. the concern about, you know, what happens if in 120 days Paul Marone's not here mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Mr. Herberger's not here. Mm -hmm. um, how do we, um, how can you have some assurance that it is part of that? Um, it is our intent for it to be a part of it, and, and I would suggest that putting it on the face of the plat along with all of the other information and making it part of that plat would, would be helpful in that regard, and we're certainly willing to do that. Okay. No more questions for me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to refer to legal right now. Uh, she has something you would like to get on. Just to address Mr. Crawford's question, and uh, Helen referred it back to legal, if you look at section 130-1674 of the Code of Ordinances, it discusses the binding nature for approval of a PUD and the stipulations that the Commission and the Council can put on a PUD approval, and that sec subsection D of that section of the Code of Ordinance states that all terms, conditions, safeguards, and stipulations made at the time of approval of the PUD shall be binding upon the applicant or any successors in interest deviations from approved plans or failure to comply with any requirements, conditions, or safeguards shall constitute a violation of these zoning regulations. So you all do have the authority to put certain stipulations or conditions on a PUD approval, um, and those do remain with the PUD that's been approved. Okay. All right. Uh, Nell, you, you still need to speak or would like to speak? Okay. The microphone, yeah, for some reason it wouldn't let me request to speak on the queue. Um, I, I, I want to just preface this with um, we're talking about 137 acres. And if you look at the vicinity map, this is about a quarter section. It's about a half mile by a half mile excluding the basically in-holding area. Um, and I know that's still hard to kind of get your head around. So I thought about everybody puts things in context of football fields. And if what I look, the source I looked up is correct and a football field is 1.3 acres, 1.32 acres, uh, uh, it's 1.32 acres, then this site has over 100 football fields in size. So my point being, and, and of course it's got 400, almost 400 homes. So we gotta get this right. This is, this would be um, something that uh, uh, could hurt a lot of people if we don't get it right. I wanted to ask staff, I didn't really follow, and sorry Mr. Marone if uh, I'm not, trying to say you didn't explain it well, but I really didn't follow that phase one and two, even though they're zoned, what, A2? They're as dense as A4. So I'm not, I'm not quite following that logic. Could one of staff explain to me what Mr. Marone was trying to say? Basically, it was a subdivision that was approved I couldn't tell you the exact year of that subdivision, the approval, but it was a subdivision that was approved before we adopted the zoning itself. It's um, and the legal, the, the lots were legally and the subdivision was legally recorded. It just had never been uh, developed. And when we came through the comprehensive rezoning, we just rezoned the area to A2. And that's the reason why it's much denser than the zoning itself. It's denser than an A2 today. Correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Marone, yes, um, on the, uh, you know, this, this area is part of the historic Lake Ram or Ramsey <clears throat> Savannah. Uh, it's a historic Savannah region that went from Highway 25 all the way to the Jafuncta. I know this area extremely well because I was over management of the Nature Conservancy's Lake Ramsey Preserve, which is 
two or three miles to the west. Right. And uh, so I know this habitat very well. Uh, the wetland map here um, is this is this line that it juts up like a peak of a house? Is that the wet line? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and why are there some wetlands that are not yet resolved, and they're called possible wetlands that has a retention pond and and some lots on top of it? At the time that the original plat was produced, we had not received the uh, formal determination from the Corps, which we have, which we have now received, and which is consistent with this. So, that the the markings on there uh, about not determined yet was because we had not the Corps had not yet made their determination, though our our expert had had suggested what it would be. But we now have that formal determination from the Corps. And they're they're not. It's considered non wet. Um, in other words, the, the wetland line, as approved by the Corps, is consistent with what you see here, that, that jagged line. But it, what about the easternmost part, the line that's drawn? Um, the, let's see, can you point to me where you're talking about? I've on got that? it highlighted in yellow on this map. Yes, yes, that... That is, that what you have highlighted in yellow is the portion, uh, is the seven acres that is wetlands that, that we are, uh, that we are impacting. That is, that is part of the it wetland It is area. part of the wetlands. Yes. Of the 37, we're preserving 30, seven are being impacted. Uh, the outline there is, is that seven. Okay. I, uh, uh, in driving down MP Plant Road and looking at the work being done on phase two, there's a tremendous amount of fill, it appears, being added to the site. It looked like one to two feet of fill spread out over the area. Can you tell me how much fill you, you plan to put on over 100 football fields? Um, I'm, I'm on phase two. Um, so it's, it's all uh, flood zone C, so we're not trying to get up. We don't have to get up to a certain base flood elevation. Um, so one to two feet would be what your house pads would be above the, uh, above the crown of the street. It didn't look like they were doing just the house pads. It, looked, it was flat across with mm, the fill. In phase two? Yeah. You know, I don't, now, part of that could be excavation from the ponds. That they are that they're putting on the lots. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my client to make sure I don't misstate that. Yeah, and so that's so that's the entire lot based on the excavation from the ponds that is coming out. That's correct. So, so you put one to two feet over 134 acres. That's that's what's happening in phase two. Now phase three. Um, whether that's exactly what would happen, we would have to have our hydrological study to know for sure what, what we would be doing there. But um, it will depend on what is excavated, and it'll, it'll depend on what we find in our drainage study. And the, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is, is the density of A4 is, as we know, much higher than A1 and A2. It is. So... Um, if, if you're in a region that has a lot of wetlands, which the Ramsey Savannah does, mm -hmm. and um, you're adding a lot of fill, um, it, there are just many factors to consider. And, sure. and so I'm trying to get clear on it. Um, several questions, so I'll okay. let you know when I'm done. The, the uh, drainage was shown to go from the northwest corner to a tributary to Horse Branch into the Chifuncta. But how does that relate to the canal that goes through the property? And does that canal flow south? 
Um, or does yeah, it flow I, north? I, well, I don't. The, I, I believe that the ditch, the ditch you're talking about, which is identified as the other waters. Yes. Yeah, I believe. Yes, I believe that. Sorry, I'm staying corrected. It actually flows north. It flows north, and yes. yeah, to that corner where you showed. Then it goes. Um, I, I will point out that tributary goes through the preserve I managed for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it is a very small creek and flooded. I can't count the number of times it came out of its banks. And when they developed the Pruden Creek mm -hmm. subdivision, um, there's some homes that front um, it's right where Pin Mill Road turns into Horse Branch, so Makes I can't turn. tell you which uh, yeah. road I'm, name I'm it is. I'm familiar. It's in that turn, isn't it? It's in not? that curve. Yeah. And yeah. there's a yeah. big bridge. Mm -hmm. There's a house that has, I feel so sorry for these people, but they have flooded at least three times mm -hmm. from this, uh, right next to this very small tributary. Um, so that is a, a real concern, and the staff mentioned that this is an overburdened waterway already. Well, I would, I would. So would that be the only outlet for the whole? Uh... No, not necessarily. Um, I mean, the horse, horse branch does cross close to the, to the property or, or on the property or a portion of the property. So um, no, no, that is. No, no, not horse branch. Yeah. The tributary. I'm sorry, not not the, the, a tributary to the horse branch. Uh -huh. Yes. So, um, no, I would tell you that's not necessarily the only outfall point, but um, we're really not in a position to get into that type of detail at this stage until we've done all the hy hydrological work. So, for a PUD, I'm looking at staff now for a for a. At this point, we can't ask where the water flows off the site. They hadn't been determined. That's you, you that's can not, ask the question, but that's not a requirement at this point to show direction of flow. Well, <laughs> it it shows the ultimate disposal of the water. Oh, I don't think they're totally clear if the ultimate disposal to Horse Branch and to the Tefuncta River. That's the ultimate disposal. Now that is a that well, if it a, goes to Covington big, High School, like, a big uh, like it's been insinuated, where does it... That's it, a big picture look at this point. Obviously, we drill down on that as we get further into yeah, the planning so, process. Okay, so you're basically saying it's going to make to the Chifuncta somehow. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Um, the um, design that shows the 25-foot drainage servitudes at the back of each yard. Um, can you explain what that is? Um, well, that's a good question. I asked that very same question when I saw the staff's comment. So in phase two, um, the staff required that we put that drainage servitude on the back of those lots at 25 feet. So that's why we put them on here. <laughs> um, it, it is possible that once we get in and have the hydrology work done, we may be able to drain these lots from back to front, so we wouldn't need that servitude in the back. But because it was required in phase two, we carried it over here because we're not in a position to suggest that we can't do that yet. So we need to, uh, we hope to be able uh, to avoid that or to work, uh, work through that issue with staff but we, we can't present them with data until we have it to deal with that at this point. So it was required in phase two. So um, for continuity purposes, we've carried it across at this point. Staff, can you explain why that would be required? That was probably engineering that required it in phase two. I'm looking at, at Ms. Lambert because I'm not sure she would know the answer to it. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. Did you say that it, there's a 25 foot servitude on all the other lots? On the on the um, on the perimeter lots. Phase two. And that that's what I guess the question is: is how will you allow any accessory structure or anything within that 25? 
Well, what, what we hope to be able to accomplish if we get to the preliminary stage is to be able to drain these lots from back to front, which would mean we wouldn't need that servitude okay. at that point. Um, but until we can demonstrate to the commission and to the staff that we can do that, we felt like we needed to include it at this point because we don't we we can't tell you definitively that we're able to do that and we don't need that servitude. Uh, but that's certainly, in our view, that is an item that we intend to hopefully address in a different manner when we get to preliminary, but we don't have the data yet to be able to do that. Um, well, I just want to make a point that, as staff pointed out, if you have 25 feet of the yard, it's not allowing m much yard to do anything right. with. Right. We, we share that concern. I mean, staff's comment is a valid, valid comment, and, and we share that. And that's why we hope to be able to resolve that at preliminary. But until we can present you with data as to how we would resolve it, we felt it was compelled to leave it as it is. Uh, I, I just found that really concerning if we can't know that in advance. Um, I, I already asked you a little bit about Phil, but um, is, is there, I guess free board isn't an issue if you're in flood zone C. Okay. Correct. I think, I think that's correct. Um, regarding green space, um, staff noted that 99% of the green space is passive and only 1.08 acres is usable uh, or active green space. Mm -hmm. So if you take out um, uh, the wetlands, that's less than 1% of the area for active. You've got a, what, a basketball court and a playground mm -hmm. for 400 homes. Um, I just want to point out, we're not just talking that kids need green space. Adults need green space, mm -hmm. too. You know, we need, you know, we need a healthy citizenry. And I would say that one acre for 400 homes is not sufficient. Um, you're supposed to provide more than 50% of green, of the green space. Uh, I mean, no more than 50% of the green space with wetlands um, can provide that required active or usable green space. And you don't have any trails, and I know if you put a trail, you're going to need it to be improved, and if you improve it, you're going to have to change your wetland permit. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. So remember, we have access to these wetland areas, but if I show a trail in there, you know what's going to happen to us? We're going to have to ag put aggregate. We're going to have to put rocks down, which means we've got to put a base down, which means we've got to put equipment in there, which we well, don't, which we don't want to do. So let you me may let need me boardwalks, or you may need. Let me say this: trails. So, I mean bridges. So we've got we've got one basketball court. We've got a playground area. We've proposed a walking trail. If another basketball court is needed, we're we're more than willing to do that as well. Um, but I would I would tell you that with the ability to access the woods. Um, and there is large access areas that, that people can get to those wooded areas, so they'll have that ability. We're not going to put trails in there because of the concern that we don't want to have to put equipment in there, but that's an opportunity. Um, and having two basketball courts, a playground area, and a walking trail, I would submit to you is not inconsistent with what you would expect to see on something A lot of people like won't just strike out into the woods. They want a trail, I can tell you. They want their hand held a little bit. We are, <laughs> we are, not, we are not willing to go in and put, put rocks in those wetlands and put, uh, put fill in those wetlands. Uh, Would then you not meeting your required active green space? I, di I disagree. I disagree. Uh, I, I think you are. That's uh, not active. That's passive. Uh, and we are not counting that as part of, we are not counting walking in those wetlands as part of our active recreation. That is not included in the active figure. The active figure is 
the basketball court and surrounding area. It is the playground and the surrounding area, and it will include the walking path that we're proposing. Not I would say a walking path around your stormwater pond with no shade is going to be very limiting most of the year. Most of the times, it's going to be too hot. Nobody's going to walk. I never see that. Well, in I, other I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree with you. <laughs> Um, I, I, I do want to comment. I, I think you need more green space where you just have shade trees. You've got so much of it. There's not going to be any shade at all in so, this in this subdivision, except for your your wetland areas. So why would there not be shade in the park area around the basketball court? Why would there not be shade in the park area around the playground? Uh, why would there You're not be acre. shade? You're one acre in the, out of in, in 138. Wait, can I finish? Yeah. <laughs> why would there not be shade in the green space area, uh, the large block green space area that is, is proposed for the center of the project? There will be shade in all of those locations. Again, I just want to leave it at that, that I believe it, the design could be better. More aesthetics that... You know, there, there are many reasons to have a PUD, and one of those reasons is for the design and the aesthetics, and I don't see that in this design. Uh, so I'll just summarize um, that if you look at the eight main reasons in code that... that uh, in section 130, 1672 of why, what qualifies changing the zoning to a PUD, of the eight main reasons, I, I believe this design fails on seven of them, and it, the staff points it out, um, not directly, but in their comments it's clear on seven of the eight reasons, the reason for the PUD is not supported. So I would encourage y'all, if the zoning does get approved, that this design would not, uh, is not sufficient. I'm done. Okay, anything else? Okay, uh, Commissioner Seeger. Uh, Paul, is there any addressing traffic trying to turn north on 25? Uh, okay, so the, uh, from MP Planche Road going north on 25, excuse me, <clears throat> there is, uh, as currently exists right now, um, there is a, a dedicated north lane, if you will, because there are two lanes going out, dedicated one left. There's really no straight, so that is, by default, uh, a northern turning lane. The opening of that additional access point to the north up near Rudy's store um, that would also give an opportunity uh, for movements to the north as well. Most, I will tell you that the, um, most of the movements predicted by the traffic study are going to be to the south. That certainly you and I know that there are going to be people that go to the north, uh, but that is a, appears to be a smaller, much smaller figure than those that are going to be turning to the south. It is. I tried to do it the other uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. The new proposed density is 2.7, uh, 2.8 units per acre. And does that include the acreage that's uh, wetlands? That that does. That 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 figure is based on the total 134.73 acres. And what would the total density be of the property if we take out the retention ponds and uh, the wetland area and the playground area? So that's about 36 acres. Um, so if we took the 36 acres, uh, that would be about, um, so that puts you at right about 100 acres. Um, so that would put you at roughly, um, what is it, about 3 point, be about 3.8 units per acre. 
give or take. My math may be off a little bit, but I think those are pretty close numbers. Correct, correct. Those would, that would still be less dense than uh, River Park Crossing and River Park Estates. Anything else, Tom? That's all. Okay. Commissioner Reyes. Anybody missed my chance, Paul? I think we got you warmed down pretty good about <laughs> So I'm going to jump on them while I can. Sure. Um, if I understand things correctly, the property of the north can be developed much, much, um, many more lots than A2, correct? If somebody came in right now, that property to the north that's A2 really is because it was previously. So it, Paul's argument about it being able to be developed at a much denser than A2, is, is that correct? Yeah, I just checked the plat was approved in 1956. Okay, so that's good. Um, at, first of all, the work that you offer to do on the roadway, um, I think those are the kind of things we're always looking for to improve the flow and, and the people obviously that live in that area uh, like that idea. Uh, and you offered to say that the developer was going to pay for it. Was that the, at the expense of impact fees? So was it looking for credits against impact fees to, no, to at do the, that? At this point, no. We're, 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 we're proposing to pay for it without impact Out of pocket. Fees. Correct. Okay. Um, the other things, uh, looking at the, the density of it, um, I, I kind of have to agree with uh, some of the other commissioners. It just feels really dense for for what we're doing here. Um, I also agree that we've been letting wetland areas as recreation areas, and in fact, we, I, I, I tend to believe they don't probably hold true to that in the end. I just feel like they're, it's kind of a, an easy out, um, and obviously you probably don't want to develop it anyway. I think that's really the real truth, because the cost of developing it obviously is not something that developer doesn't want to do so I, I, I'm just not overly impressed when I see all that especially when I look at this whole development and the stuff that's already been done where it's completely cleared bare on the stuff that's already been done I think it was phase two that's already developed mm -hmm. looks pretty just obliterated which will tell me pretty much that the whole area that this is built on is going to be there'll be like it'd be a tree found except in those little wetland areas and again, we just keep clearing all the trees out of the parish here, putting houses in as tight as we can because these lots are small. There's hardly room for a tree by the time you get done. And if they are, they're going to be not trees that were mature and left there. They're going to be new small trees maybe planted. Um, I just don't get a good feel for that. And I, and I just think this looks like more of the same of the mistakes that I feel like we've made throughout the parish already. I think there's things that you're trying to do that are very admirable. The, the efforts towards working on the drainage for the area is just exactly the kinds of things we're looking mm -hmm. for. And I think you're right on with trying to help with those issues for things that you didn't cause necessarily. Right. The fixing of the road, you're trying to do something, but in the end, it still ends up being a develop, feels like a development that, that just doesn't fit what we, continue to do in the parish. Even though you've downsized it some, can appreciate that. To me, it's, it's just too much. It's just too much. And if you noticed, I don't know if you picked up on the gentleman that came in and talked about the property to the south, he'd love to see this A4 go in here because he'll be the next one walking in the door and saying, well, you did A4 to the north. Why can't I have A4 on my property right here? And, and that's what happens as we keep doing that. And, uh, and and what do you say to the next guy? And we just keep going. So we made a mistake on one little spot in front of it to the or to the uh, I guess it's to the east of the property. Some of it's zoned pretty, but that doesn't mean we need to keep doing the same thing. And and I just feel like uh, this development could be massaged quite a bit before it would meet what I would like to see coming out of this area. So with that in mind, that, that's all. I have. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Barcelona. Paul. Uh, yes. The A2 area um, on the north side, um, what is the allowable density for that area? It's, well, it's, it's not, 
Is it the, correct the, to say that it is not one unit per acre? What well, what is the actual density of that particular area? That's a better that's a better way to uh, phrase the question. What is the actual density? Right. Uh, because the the zoning doesn't match what's there, as Ms. Lambert noted, because of the uh, uh, the subdivision existed before the zoning was in put was in place. So um, the the lots in River Park Estates are 60 by 120. So they are the they are smaller and they are more dense than your typical A4 development. They are they are really akin to an A4A. That's that's what the density is of River Park Estates, though okay. it's zoned A2. So so this A2 area is the same density as A4A. Is that right, Helen? Or am I? It's it's even more dense. the The plat was approved in 1956. Okay. At that time, there was more than likely no zoning, and right. it was a lot of record subdivision that was dormant for many, many years, eventually came back and was developed. It was rezoned to A2 Suburban when we went, it went through the comprehensive rezoning. So it doesn't match the, the zoning. It's a much higher density. If you're looking at 60 by 120, it's more closer to the A4A of six lots per acre. Okay, so the density allowed in that area is, is higher than A2, what's currently required as A2, is that? Um, the density of the area is much higher than the zoning of the area okay. would be a way to look at it. Anything else, Paul? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. Okay. I see no one else in the queue right now. <coughs> we need to... Uh, I need motions on the... Uh, first one would be the, the uh, zoning. Uh, Commissioner McInnes. Um I move that we deny um, the zoning request. Okay. Do we have a second? I second that. That was... Mr. Rez. Commissioner Rez. Okay. We have a motion and a second to deny. Please vote. The motion to deny carries. Okay. Since the motion carried to deny, we need to go ahead and, and go to the uh, HUD. And that uh, is on 2143 2020. Dash 2143ZC. Mr. McKinnis. Um, I, I echo uh, Commissioner Rez's summary. You know, the, the developers tried to do some good things, improving the road and so forth, changing some lot sizes, but I think that um, more creativity needs to go into a smaller density and a, a, a better design taking all the points that we've made into consideration so I vote to deny the PUD as well. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner uh, McInnes to deny 2020-2143-ZC. Uh, Commissioner Rest. And second the motion. Second by Commissioner Rest. Please vote. The motion to deny carries. All right. Those two uh, were denied. Paul, of course, you know that you've got the right to appeal to the uh, council. All right. Next item, item three is 2020-2200-ZC, existing zoning. Uh, is HC2 Highway Commercial District. Proposed zoning is HC3 Highway Commercial District. Location, partial located on the north side of US Highway 190, west of Sunset Drive, slide L, Ward 9, District 11. It's 1.3505 acres. Uh, petitioners, DeWanda Gladney. Uh, owner is Silver Lake Estate, LLC. Uh, it's Council District 11. Staff. 
The purpose of the HC2 Highway Commercial District is to provide for the location of moderately scaled re retail uses versus the purpose of the HC3 Highway Commercial District, which is to provide for location of larger scale, heavy commercial res uh, retail office and service uses. The requested zoning change to HC3 will definitely create an increase in intensity of the allowable uses in the area. We'd like to point out that the request is being uh, submitted uh, in order to accommodate a wedding venue in the existing building. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? You can come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Delonda Gladney, um, 7818 Broadwood Drive, New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay, and you want to tell us the basis of your request? Yeah, we, we, we just want to... Um, have a wedding venue is going to house about 100 um, guests in total with staff. Um, I think the square footage that we're going to be using is about 7,000 square feet, and that includes um, restrooms and um, storerooms. Okay. Okay. Is anybody else here to speak on the case for or against? No? All right, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Drum. Mr. Wong. Yes. Okay, this is that former Chinese restaurant? Yes, sir. Okay, do you own it now or are you waiting no, for the zoning to be able to purchase it? We're not purchasing it, we're leasing it. Leasing it? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I know that there was an old wooden shack that was there. They yes. tore it. Great chicken, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they tore that down, and then they put it into this big fancy place, yes. and that went under. Yes. But uh, I think that it would be good to be used as a for a wedding venue. Yes, sir. Because you have the the light right there would be able to control yes, the traffic, and uh, if somebody gets drunk and dies, the you know, car is across the street. <laughs> Can we strike oh, that no from coot. the record? I have no coot. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Life is fun. You have to yes, enjoy yes. life, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I see no reason why this cannot happen. It's a, it's a good location, yes. and, and you know it, it it really needs to be used. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else before I Commissioner Crawford? Motion. Oh, okay. Uh, I just had one quick question. How many parking spaces exist there now? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, uh, the owner was supposed to be here, but he's not. But um, there's um, an extra lot to the back. In the back that's of the building. covered, yeah. So, but okay. he's going to restrike so it and do whatever he yeah. needs to do yeah. to add that extra Five parking more. space. Okay. What, what would be your guess if you, if you took a um, guess? In total? Yeah. Maybe about 70. Okay. one for full occupants. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, sir. Commissioner, motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve. Commissioner Drum, you have further comments? Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes my mouth moves before my my, my head does, <laughs> and so I apologize if I said anything that was wrong. It's. I'm sorry. I can't take life seriously, and so I just uh, I just speak. But I do apologize, but it, and I second the motion. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> motion seconded by Commissioner John. <laughs> Excuse me. Commissioner Ress. Yeah, I just had one question about the uh, distance between the back of the property there and the, looks like some homes behind there on Fairview. Um, yes, there are some homes. And I'm just there. thinking a noise band or whatever playing with the wedding party and in the residents along that area around there. Do we have concerns about noise, uh, distance, staff? You got any idea how far the distance is there? Well, if you're looking at the depth of the property, so it's pretty much all residential on the east side as well as in the back. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a possibility for the petitioner to reduce the request for rezoning, you know, keeping a portion of it, zone HC2. Um, to limit as to how far they could go with the parking lot. 
I understand my, hopefully you understand my concern being is if I lived behind there and somebody was going to have wedding parties there. For, I, pretty much I've been to a few of those, probably similar to Mr. Drum. And, uh, <laughs> I would have, I'm not sure I'd want that in my backyard, okay, is the only thing. I'm not opposed to the wedding venue at all as far as finding, but I'm not not positive this is the right, it might be a good spot because it is being used, but I worry about the residents in the area there and the amount of noise that they would be encountering. Um, just, yes. I mean, I guess I would just point out that the sheriff's office would enforce any noise, uh, I guess, ordinances or um, complaints that are that take place. I see none of the homeowners showed up. That's with true. Concerns, too. but uh, yeah. that doesn't mean they didn't that they even know about it. Depending on if it was posted out there on 190 only, they may not have even. No, we we send uh, they got cards out. They get cards on their door. Yeah. Okay. Good enough for me. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we have a motion and a second? You do. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Y'all have you. a good one. Thank you. Papers aren't wanting to work here. All right, the next item is. Uh, twenty twenty dash twenty two oh one dash ZC. The existing zoning is A four single family residential. Proposed zoning is PF one public facilities district. Location partial located on the east side of Highway 434, south of Barry Todd Road, being lots 11A, 11B, and 11C, Lacombe, Ward 7, District 7. Uh, it's 3.147 acres. The petitioners, uh, Julie Agan, uh, owners uh, Carol and Robert Gales, Council District 7 staff. The purpose of the PF1 Public Facilities District is to provide for the location of governmental and institutional uses to the public. Although the property is surrounded by residential uses, the site is located along a state highway and could provide needed centralized services to the residents of St. Tammany Parish. I uh, just want to mention also that the reason for the request is to accommodate the new proposed location of the Council on Aging for St. Tammany Parish. Thank you. Julie, good evening. I probably mispronounced your last name. It is Agen. Agen? Okay. Agen, yes. <laughs> good evening. Um, commission members, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, my name, as we just said, is Julie Agen, and I am the executive director for the Council on Aging. I have with me this evening several people I'd like to just introduce briefly. I have Mr. Kelly Walgamot. He is our vice president of the board of directors of the Council on Aging. With him also is Ms. Ginger Bruce. She is a resident of Lacombe and also a member of our board of directors. I have Mr. Andrew Cook with us this evening. He is the chairman of the Coast Advisory Council and also a member, uh, also a resident of Lacombe. With him is his wife, Carol. We also have Ms. Helen Rogers, who is a staff member and a driver for Star Transit prior to the shutdown last May, I'm sorry, last March, Prior to the shutdown last March, she is a driver who brought our Lacombe older adults to the Lacombe Activity Center. Um, I also have um, Mr. Darren Shooter and Ms. Chris Hodge. They are upper management for Star Transit. I also have um, signatures from 36 residents of Lacombe who would like to see this move forward. Um, the St. Tammany Council on Aging has been serving the older adults of our parish since 1968. Prior to COVID, we were offering 21 different services designed to enhance and maintain the independence, well-being, quality of life, and involvement in the community of our older adults. 
our requested zoning change will allow us to improve and increase those services. The property on Highway 434 is an excellent location for a new Lacombe Activity Center. We are currently located in a strip mall on Highway 190, but the building is old and the clients who would come there every day deserve a space that reflects a brighter future and a place that they can call their own. We're proposing a 2,500 square foot building on the subject property. The property on 434 is also large enough for us to construct a transportation office. For the past five years, Coast, through a cooperative endeavor agreement with St. Tammany Parish, has operated the Star Transit system. We have operated in several locations over the past five years, none of which really allowed us to have a central location from which we could um, service the entire parish. 434 would allow for us to do that. And having one central location in the middle of the parish would cut down on what's called deadhead hours. That's the time it takes for the driver to leave the parking lot and get to the first pickup. Being more centrally located, very evenly between 190 and the interstate, is going to make it so much easier to get to locations and thereby allow us to provide more rides for the public in St. Tammany. Um, we've been looking for a location for the Star Transit office for about five years. We've been looking for a location for a new Lacombe Activity Center for about four years. Um, the three acres on Highway 434 would allow us to construct both, and we ask that you graciously approve our request. Okay, thank you. I've got uh, some cards here. Is it anyone wish to speak against on this? Seeing no one, I'm going to go to the cards here. I've got uh, Andrew Cook who wishes to speak. As I said, my name is Andrew Cook. I live in Lacombe and uh, part of the senior center. You know, I've watched our seniors and and um, I realize too that our population there is growing and is growing in leaps and bounds uh, by, by what I see with house building. And I realize too that, that it has really become a retirement community. And a lot of our seniors from different trades of life have uh, come into our community and appreciate coming to the senior centers. And they were, they were spoken to us about it. And with Ms. Ms. Julie Aiken's help, uh, and you know, as a part of the advisory committee, we have uh, you know establishing different grounds to help our seniors. And uh, you know, most of our seniors like a lot of the seniors that are sitting here, you know, are with us, uh, uh, have, you know, capacities of, of we might say, uh, forgetfulness, <laughs> you know, to put it lightly. And, and uh, you know, in, in part of our uh, endeavors is to strengthen that and uh, while providing them meals, uh, noon meals. But this, this uh, zoning is just a footprint of, of what Coast plans on doing here and the benefits of uh, St. Tammany Parish. You know, our executive director travels extensively to improve that facility in the comb and in St. In St. Tammany Parish. You know, and, and I, as, a, as a, a senior, I appreciate going there. My wife does, and all the seniors that I've spoke to approve of it. You know, the 36 signatures we have, was just a footprint of what I could do. You know, I mean, that was a quick 36 signatures. I'm sure there's a lot of people in uh, in the gray-headed area, <laughs> we'll just say, that would uh, definitely, uh, you know, come if they had uh, a nice facility like this, like the, is proposed for this footprint of this property. So uh, the property, as I said, you know, as Ms. Hagen said, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna be at 25, 100 square foot facility, which is much bigger than the facility we had in Lacombe uh, uh, Shopping Center, you know, and and uh, and it would also, uh, you know, we have such things as exercise and games and 
this, that, and other. So it, it's a, it's a, it's just a great improvement for St. Tammany Parish, you know, for those who will become seniors, and those who are seniors right now, you know. So it's a, it's a win-win situation for the whole St. Tammany Parish, you know. So I, I'll leave it at that, and thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. I have another card that's the same address, but I don't have a name on it. Do you, do you wish to speak? No. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. In between speakers, I would like to point out there are residences nearby, and I want to assure Mr. Reps that the sheriff will enforce the noise ordinances <laughs> at this facility as well. <laughs> All right. Good deal. <laughs> Thank you. And I have uh, another card for Chris Hodge, I believe it is, wishes to uh, speak other. Oh, no, sorry. I can't that. Okay, all right. Good deal. Well, we've got uh, all the speaker cards taken care of. Does anyone else in the audience wish to speak on this? I'm going to close it to the public and bring it back to the commission. Commissioner uh, Crawford. Okay. Um, I live in Lacombe. I'm very familiar with the area. Uh, this piece of property has been vacant for a long time, and it's actually set up perfectly for what the Council on Aging would like to do. It's a long piece of property. Gives them the ability to put a building there and have parking, and then also the transportation off to the side. So it's a, it's a wonderful situation. It's on the highway. I think everything that, that Julie pointed out would be um, exactly as she said it's it's just a perfect central spot so i'd like to make a motion for approval okay uh commissioner seeger um, over the years i've had numerous family members and community members that have um, used coast services and in my honest opinion that's one thing that i can honestly say that we're doing right in this parish. And with that comment, I would like to applaud the employees and the people that are here tonight and second the motion to approve. Okay. You're seconding the motion, right? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Thank you all very much, and you do uh, very good things for the senior citizens in the parish. Me being one of them. <laughs> all right, the next item is 2021-2215-ZC. Existing zoning is A3 Suburban District and HC2 Highway Commercial District. Proposed zoning is A3 Suburban District, HC2 a highway commercial district, and MHO manufactured housing overlay. Partial located on the east side of Preacher's Oak Lane, south of US 190, being lots 44 and 45, square three, Avondale subdivision, slide L. Ward nine, district 14. Uh, it's uh, 1.38 acres. The petitioner's Dwayne Parker. The owner's Dwayne Parker. And this is uh, Council District uh, 14. Staff? Yeah. The 25 future land use plan designates the site to be developed with residential dwellings that vary in site design and density. The subject property is located in a neighborhood that is developed with majority of manufactured homes at the nearby intersection of Preacher's Oak Lane and North Preacher's Oak Lane was rezoned to accommodate manufactured Homes in 2015, which was ZC 1505048. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good evening, sir. You must be Dwayne Parker. Um, yes, sir, I am. All right. What do you, would you like to tell us? Um, previously, the neighborhood was, what I didn't, oh, I'm sorry. What I didn't quite understand was when they was telling me at the zoning office is that I was under the impression that the whole area was manufactured home approved. Then they say somewhere along the line it got changed. And then 
when my neighbor moves his mobile home, his manufacturer home in, it's supposed to have retroactive reverse back where you didn't have to come to the hearing. But when I went and applied to do my permits and everything, they told me I had to come back. Well, first of all, they sent me to talk to um, Councilman T.J. Smith, I think his T name yeah, was. Yeah, that's T.J. So I had to talk to him. And then after I spoke to him, then I told, I had to go back to the zoning, I mean, to the planning office again to tell him I had spoke to him. Then they had to call him. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what's the right procedure. There's, there's been a lot of changes over the years of zoning in the parish, okay, and, and how things are, are done. Maybe they were done uh, 20 years ago. They were done entirely different than they are today, okay? And you have to come before uh, the zoning commission, which is this body right here, and get approval to put a manufactured housing on a piece of property in St. Tammany Parish. There's, unless it's a, a, a mobile home park, I don't think there's a blanket. Uh, in Ross, Helen, one of you could correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's a blanket agreement for a large track of land unless it is uh, a park. It is a park. The park is my neighbor's. They have at least about 75 of them um, right across from Skaters Paradise. It's called Shady Pine Trailer Park, I think it's called. Uh, right across from um, Skaters Paradise. There's like 75 mobile homes there. Um, then on my street, it may be three houses. Everything else is mobile homes. Okay, well, so you can go forward. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and, and handle this item on the agenda. Okay, that way you can, you know, get your mobile home or uh, manufactured housing and uh, get your permits and everything and, and go forward if, if it's approved by this body. Okay, and then I'm going to ask staff to, to look at that area. If it is uh, a mobile home park, there's a possibility that if it was something that's been quite old, that it's, it has the wrong zoning on. I don't know. Okay. But, no. but we need to, to deal with yours tonight, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, unless you have something else, I want to see if there's anybody in, else in the audience that uh, would like to speak either for or against. Well, I have one more question. Okay. If I am approved tonight, would it be for the whole area to go back? Or Because the reason I'm asking is because I own two more lots next to it. So I would have to come back in front of the board again for those two as well? Yes. Okay, and then my next question would be, they've been a whole bunch of other, I was looking at some more property down the street from me, and they have these red signs up now, some kind of zoning <laughs> signs. Well, they were probably uh, uh, had a, uh, a mobile home pulled in there, and the zoning is improper, and they went to get lights hooked up or something. Oh, okay. And, uh, because the zoning was not correct, uh, it's I think it's a cease and desist uh, orders what you're seeing on those red signs. It was okay. posted by code enforcement. But well, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they didn't have any phone number to call and find out any information. That's why. I... You're welcome to come out, call our office, sir, and we can. Okay. You know, give you some information. Okay. okay. All right. Anything else? Oh um, no, sir. Thank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we have seen no one else in the audience that wishes to speak, so I'm going to uh, bring it back to the commission. Uh, Commissioner Fitzmarsh. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmarsh to approve. Commissioner Crawford. I second the motion. Second by Commissioner Crawford. Any further discussion? Please vote. McKinnon. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry you had to come out in this lovely weather. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, I have a picture of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next item is 2020-2217-ZC. 
Uh, existing zoning is A1 suburban district. Proposed zoning is A3 suburban district. Location, partial located on the north side of Penn Mill Road, west of Covington. Uh, west of Covington, Vincent Airport Road, Covington, Ward 3, District 3. It's 1.49 acres. The petitioners, uh, Aparicio Enterprises, LLC, Christine Aparicio. Owner is Aparicio Enterprises, LLC, Christine Aparicio. It's Council District 3. Staff? The site is currently surrounded on all sides by property that are zone A1 suburban zoning district, which requires a five acre parcel size or one unit per five acres. The reason for the request is to allow for the sub to subdivide the property into a quarter, I'm sorry, half acre size lots. At this time, um, you know, the, as I said, the site is mostly surrounded by A1, so the A3 would definitely uh, allow for an increase in density in the area. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Aparicio, good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, I, have a few, I have a couple pictures that I'm just going to, I have about four copies I'll just hand over and y'all can find you there. Um, the, the reason we want to rezone is because we do want to resubdivide. Um, we have, it's, an, it's 1.49 acres and we just want to split it in half to have two home sites. Um, each home site would be uh, three quarters of an acre, almost right under three quarters of an acre. And um, the road frontage would be 155.5 feet. So if you look at the, the packet I have, this is the subject property and if, oh, Gotta take my mask down so I can. <laughs> um, and if you look on the next page, it is surrounded by A1. It's A1 zoning and it's surrounded by A1 zoning, but I wanted y'all to see what is actually surrounding the property because there's not really any A1 zoning, um, anything that actually fits into A1 zoning there. So the first thing is um, there's an industrial building just right down the road and it is I2. Um, right behind us is the, the airport, the little private Covington Vincent Airport. Um, let's see, there's two tenths of a mile to the west is Simpson Farm subdivision, which is um, a PUD development. I'm sure y'all are familiar with it. And then going down toward the, sorry, toward the east, um, when you're going coming from the property going toward 190, it's all 100 foot lots, and there's probably about I think I counted about 45 houses. Some of them look like they might have been on a little bit bigger, but 43 of them were definitely 100 feet. So um, you can see pictures of that on the next two pages. You can see um, we're about 1.3 miles from the intersection of Penn Mill and 190. It's all 100 feet lots from that point all the way to our property. Um, there's a, a little bit of undeveloped land, not too much. And then, um, of course, you can see what Simpson Farms look like. I mean, I don't know what size their lots are, like 50, 75 feet at, the, at best. Um, so what we're asking to do uh, is move to A3, which I'm pretty sure it's, half, it's a half acre designation. We would be at three quarters of an acre. And when you look around, and even on the, if you can see the zoning here, these eight, none of these, these are all home sites as well, and they're a little bit bigger than 100 feet um, road frontage, but none of them are five acres. I don't see anything surrounding me that's five acres except this industrial area. So I just um, kind of hoping that we can go ahead and, and rezone it so that we can subdivide. We want to put two new construction homes um, on the property. Okay. Thank you. Let's see if there's anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak, either for or against. Okay, seeing no one, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioner McInnes. I'm just wondering how wide would the lots be? They would be 155.5 feet wide on the front. Mm -hmm. And then they're about 208 deep. Okay. Well, I, I know this area well, and there are lots of small lots along Pin Mill Road and Horse Branch Road, and uh, that seems to be the 
what it's turning into, so I wouldn't have no objection to it. Okay. So did I hear a motion? No. Well, I was going to see what other folks thought. Okay. First. It's up to you. Anything else? Okay. Commissioner Fitzmore. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Fitzmars to approve. Commissioner Seeger. Second. Second by Commissioner Seeger. Any further discussion? Please vote. Now. The motion to approve carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item seven was uh, postponed. Uh, so we go to item eight, which is 2021-2219-ZC. Uh, existing zoning is A3 Suburban District. Proposed zoning is A3 Suburban District and uh, MHO, Manufactured Housing Overlay. Partial located on the east side of 4th Street, south of Avenue D, being Partial 11, Square 47, Village of Guthrie Subdivision, Ward 8, District 9. It's .138 acres. The petitioner is Charles Tabor. Owner is uh, Tamland Investments Incorporated, Council District 9. Staff? The 2025 Future Land Use Plan designates the site to be developed with residential dwellings that vary in site design and density. The site is located within a neighborhood developed with a mix of stick-built and manufactured homes. All right, thank you. Charles Tabor? Good evening, sir. Uh, this is my wife, Kayleen. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayleen Tabor, Charles Tabor, my husband. Um, we just went to purchase the property and put a little manufacturer on. Uh, we've been married since 82, never had children. And we're getting the grays. So. <laughs> we're looking to just kind of downsize. We sold our house of um, 20 years, so... Just looking to, for a place to look out our older years and pick um, the spot. Yeah, nice little spot. And <laughs> okay. Just requesting an overlay. Um, All right. On there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Let's you. see if anyone else in the audience yeah. might want to wish to speak. I uh, see no one. So I'll close it to the public. Bring it back to the commission. Commissioner Seeger. Motion by Commissioner Seeger to approve. Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitzmaurice. Any further discussion? Please vote. The motion to approve carries. All right. We have no new business. We have no old business. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you all.